Well, wonderful. Uh, hey, let's get right into it today. So um, we're in a series, a little four-part series that's super important for us as a church because it's all about who we are and specifically who we are as Court Street Christian Church. These are four key phrases that we've been looking at, one each week. This is going to be week three of four, and uh, those phrases really make up what we believe to be our unique contribution as a church to each other, to the community, and to the world. Different churches have different functions, but this one is really, uh, these ones are really the heartbeat of what is Court Street and who we are. And so we've covered Court Street as being a hospital for healing. We've covered Court Street being a place of inspiring beauty. And today I want to look at who we are as a training facility for life. Now, we get a little bit of inspiration for this from some teaching that myself and other staff members went through a while back, as well as our elders. And uh, that comes from a pastor named Andy Stanley. And he has some great, succinct ways of putting things. One of the ways that he talks about Jesus is like this. He says, following Jesus will make your life better. And it will make you better at life. And that's how we came up with the idea of that's really what we want is to be a training facility for life that when you come here and you encounter God through this place, that it will actually make you better at life in a way that affects others positively, in a way that just helps you be able to see God in the the mundane of life, in the everyday, and also in the grandiose moments as well. And so today what I want to zoom in on is I want to zoom in on one area of life specifically. There's a lot we could talk about. There's a lot we always do talk about. But today I'm going to zoom in on an area of life that I want you to see if you can guess what we're going to talk about. It can make your life more fun or it can make your life more stressful. It can cause you to experience feelings of peace, of joy, of generosity. And also it can cause you to feel deeply Things like shame, guilt, or even extreme fear or terror. This area of life is usually tied in the number one category in marriage of things that either induce great stress or peace. And the area that I'm talking about in life is, can you guess it? Finances. We're going to talk about money and what we do with the resources that we have. Now, as um, we get into this today, and some of you might go, oh boy, here we go. Is this where they're going to, you know, try and guilt us into giving extra or this or that? No, no, no. We're not like that here. Remember, this is a training facility for life. It'll make your life better. It'll make you better at life. And this is actually a very exciting area for us to talk about as a church. And uh, I just want to see where you're at when I bring up finances. What kind of feelings do you get? inside of your head, inside of your soul. I've got some words up here on the screen. And uh, if you print it off our note sheet online, you can just uh, circle some of these words from that note sheet. Or if you didn't, you can just kind of jot down or take note of which ones you relate to. You can circle as many as you want. Maybe you feel peace or you feel a bit of disempowerment when you think of money and you think of your finances. Maybe there's concern. Maybe there's ignorance, betrayal, excitement, anticipation, Or maybe there's guilt or annoyance or some satisfaction and some empowerment. Maybe you have a great feeling of freedom or even, like I mentioned a few beats ago, fear or even terror when the subject of money and finances comes up. Take just a moment and acknowledge uh, where you're at there. And, um, And let's just be honest before God about how we really feel about this topic. You know, with the uh, last year that we've been through, a little more than a year, there's been a lot of financial and uh, career uncertainty. There's been, and we still exist in that space, don't we? I know that um, right now, our, uh, our community here in Marion County, Oregon, is going through an increase in our restrictions that are affecting some people's livelihoods. And uh, just to let you know also in that, we're still able to keep our church building open and still do our service with the same precautions that we've been doing. So we're keeping our, um, our uh, in-person service going. But at that same time, we know that many other, uh, many other businesses 
in the community are not because of the increased restrictions. And I just want to say this. There's some of you out there that when I bring up this subject, right now you are in a severe place of financial distress. Maybe there's a lot of uncertainty where it's not just a, a, you know, a word up here, but something you're like, Corey, you don't understand. My head's underwater, and I'm drowning right now. I don't know if I can handle hearing some happy stories about money. I just want to acknowledge you, and I want to acknowledge the difficulty that you're in, and to just say there's probably something in this sermon for you, I hope, but also you're in an extreme spot if that's the case for you right now. Maybe you don't know how you're going to keep the lights on. Maybe you don't know uh, if your job is, gonna, is going to make it through this final leg of the pandemic. Maybe, there's, maybe it's already you're at your, your wit's end, at the end of your rope. And I just want to pause and say a prayer over those of you who are in that very sensitive spot. Okay? I want to acknowledge that before we dive into the weeds of finances. And so let's bow our hearts together and pray. God, one of the great descriptions of you uh, that you've given us through the scriptures is as the God who is the provider. And I know that uh, every time I talk about money, especially this year, uh, you know, thinking about giving this sermon, there's people in extreme financial distress. And God, I I just pray right now that those folks would, would sense your care for them that uh, you know the very number of hairs on their heads, you know the very number of dollars and cents in their bank account. Um, Lord, you see all that, and you are the God of compassion. You are also the God who makes a way. And so I pray, Lord, that uh, today we would cry out for you, and we would receive the mercy, uh, the wisdom, the strength, and even just the, the direct provision to meet the needs that are before each person. God, uh, love us through this, provide for each person through this, and uh, Lord, please make a way. We love you, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me tell you the story of my mama and my papa. I grew up in a, uh, in a house where um, my parents viewed finances on two extreme ends of a spectrum. In fact, let me show you a spectrum right here, just a very simple thing. On one end are the free spirits when it comes to money and finances, and on the other end are the people that we'll call the numbers nerds. And, uh, you know, if you have a problem with the word nerd, welcome to 2021, people. Being a nerd now is a cool thing, just like being a free spirit is a cool thing. So we got cool cats on both sides of the spectrum, all right? And uh, my parents, though, were definitely, like, almost falling off each side of the spectrum, I would say. My dad was a super conservative numbers nerd, and my mom was a super uber free spirit. And I remember hearing about uh, when they were young in marriage and they had a couple of kids and they were just, you know, they they were just in that chaos of adjusting to life with children and all this and the work and all this kind of deal. And um, my mom uh, went into the bank because she really didn't understand why her um, why her checks had been refused at the store. And so she went in there and she knew that my dad was on the numbers nerd side of things. And so she was concerned because she's like, oh boy, what's going on? Did I mess something up? And she goes into the bank and she says to them, she says, I don't understand why I'm not being able to get stuff at the store. I still have checks in my checkbook. (laughs) And uh, my dear sweet mom got an education that day that just because she had a lot of checks didn't mean that she also had a lot of money that those checks represented. And she's grown a lot since then. But it was, it was this great example of these two people in very different spaces relating very differently to their money. And I wonder if you would acknowledge right now, just by putting a little X on the spectrum here, where you consider yourself to be. Are you more of a free spirit or are you more of a numbers nerd? Or maybe you see yourself somewhere in the middle. And as you acknowledge that, if you have a spouse, a significant other that you're relating to with your finances, uh, maybe put a little uh, note on here where you consider them to be. And just acknowledge that the two of you may be in really similar congruent places, or you might see things uh, very differently. You know, this is an area, like I said before, that can cause a ton of stress in relationships. And um, 
and oftentimes we'll, uh, we'll entrench ourselves when we're stressed out and we kind of preach our own perspective into being the right one. If you don't know where you are right now, I'll just tell you one of the great verses that relates to free spirits is they really like things like 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And this is where it says, each of you should give. See, sweetheart, we should give. We should give it all away. You should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly. See, don't be such a stick in the mud or under compulsion for, listen to this, make sure you underline this, all of you, all of you numbers nerds out there, God loves a cheerful giver. And so the free spirits, they love verses like this. They're like, this is great. And then the numbers nerds go to the scripture too and flip through and they find a passage like Proverbs to fire back that says, you know, sweetie, the Bible does say the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. Mm -mm -mm. And so we can oftentimes preach ourselves into rightness based on where our personalities are at. And I'll tell you the truth is uh, Allison and I actually have kind of a similar gender dynamic to what my parents did growing up. I'm much more of a numbers nerd is the truth of it. And she's much more of a free spirit. And we've gone on a whole journey to grow together to experience unity even in our diversity. That's something that can take place through God maturing you over the years. Well, this sermon, I'm about to, I'm about to hand it off right now to what was supposed to be a financial update that Danny Daly, Pastor Danny, uh, and I did last week. We shot this update here at the church, and we filmed it. And at the end of it, uh, we, were like, um, we were like, how long was that? Thinking it was just a couple of minutes. And they were like, oh, it was more than a couple of minutes. Don't worry, it's not too terribly long. But uh, we like to be really transparent about our numbers here, how God's working through the finances, and there's usually some pretty amazing stories to tell of people's generosity. And so uh, once we did this update, we realized it really wouldn't fit in an announcement section. It really belongs more as uh, the lion's share of a sermon. And so I want you to hear this story and this update of what God has done in our midst, just in this one specific area of finances in 2020. And so I'll hand the sermon over to Danny and I here, and I'll come back to you here in a few minutes. Well, hello, church. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so delighted that we get to worship together. Today, we have some exciting announcements that I'm, I'm excited to share with, share with you as a church. And uh, that's why there's both Corey and I here today. We are actually going to talk through some church business. And sometimes, especially during the pandemic of 2020, we've had people asking, hey, how's the church doing? And we just want to share a little bit about our finances and what that looks like so that you can have an answer to that question. Yeah, this is actually a really exciting conversation around here. We don't get nervous when we talk about money. We get excited because it's evidence of God's generosity through you. And so thou shalt not touch that dial. You are going to listen to this. It'll be exciting. You'll hear some good things. But uh, let's get right into it, Danny. Sure. So I'm a numbers person, and I'm glad that I can help represent some of this to you. First of all, our income for the year of 2020 was $795 thousand dollars and so we also have some expenses as a business and as a church and those expenses for 2020 were eight hundred and forty eight thousand dollars now one of the things you probably notice uh, right off the bat with this is there's a difference in these numbers in 2020 we were actually in the red and uh, we are 100% donation funded, by the way, with a little asterisk by that, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. But um, so this is people like you and me uh, just believing in the mission of the church, donating to the mission of the church. And uh, pretty much every year, these numbers almost match up exactly. And uh, 2020 was a unique year, wasn't it? That's to say the least. Um, and uh, I've talked to a lot of my other pastoral friends in ministry, uh, in uh, non the nonprofit world. Many organizations in 2020 experienced a decrease in their giving. It was a rough year on people, and it was a rough year on donations and nonprofits as well. Now, in 2020, one of the unique things that we benefited from as a church was something that you probably heard a lot about. Maybe if you ran a business, you participated in this as well, but was a PPP loan. And the P's stand for something. Will you remind me? Because that's Absolutely. Yep, uh -huh. It's a lot of alliteration, but it's Paycheck Protection Program, right? Paycheck Protection okay. Program. That's exactly it. 
And uh, the thing about the church that's not included in those other budget numbers that I'm showing you is that we have a robust and thriving child care center ministry that's right on site here. So five days a week, we're caring for kids in the community. Well, when the pandemic really ramped up, that uh, organization had to be completely shut down for a few months. And the elders faced a really difficult and agonizing choice. You know, we could, we could put the, the um, employees of the center, who we just love and we love the work that they do, but we could put them into an unemployment situation, which ultimately would have decreased their income that they depend on month to month. We didn't like that. And so uh, what we chose to do, it was before PPP was really in place, but we just said, we want to keep these folks as whole as possible, and we need them to be ready to jump back into work as soon as they can because the families are depending on us. And so we really stepped out in faith, and then this program came along. And because of this program, we were able to fund those child care center workers for those few months, plus we were able to make up some of the giving deficit for the year to just keep our staff whole. And, um, and uh, you know, another really just sort of a uh, beautiful and miraculous story through this was um, one of our staff members, Josh Fisher. He's married to Liz Fisher. And Liz works or worked at a local bank, and uh, she was able to help us navigate this government loan process, which when it came out, it was a nightmare. People were freaking out, and it was really miraculous uh, that we were able to get it. And then it was also super exciting, miraculous, that already 100% of that has been forgiven. And so that's super exciting news. And so after we funded the, you know, uh, making up the child care center deficit, keeping them whole for three months, took over 100000 well over $100,000 of that money. But then if we jump back to what our adjusted income or donations looked like in 2020, they ended up just slightly over our expenses. So that's pretty exciting news. I don't know how you feel about it, but each year it's like God does something miraculous, surprising. Who knew he'd use the U.S. government? I mean, it's just like, go God, you can use whatever you want, you know? (laughs) But would you just pause wherever you are for just a moment and just give God a round of applause for that? Because that's super exciting stuff. It is such a delight to celebrate that and to share that with you, church. And so one of the things we want to be transparent about is how donations are used here. And so we actually have a pie chart about what that looks like for the donations that are given, what, where do they go? And so for about 10% is used for our facilities, and that's like utilities and things like that. About 11% is used for ministry expenses. is used for our mortgage, and 54% is used for staff expenses, and that's the church staff specifically. Yeah, and you know, up here, these numbers, like some of these we can't control very much, like your facilities, you know, expenses, like your water sewer, this kind of stuff, it just kind of is what it is. It's the cost of doing business, so to speak. Um, our mortgage is what it is. It's these two numbers right here that really get us excited, that make our, our hearts, and we think God's heart, really pitter-patter. I mean, he gets it. we got to have a building and do this other stuff. But, you know, funding people and funding the stories that God loves through these ministry dollars is really um, the heart and soul of this church. And within this ministry budget here is a whole slew of things. There is monthly support for local ministries and local organizations and international organizations as well. There's also some one-time gifts that we uh, do drives for to then funnel through those. Uh, Local school support is in there. Many of you heard of our mentoring Richmond partnerships. Also like our youth ministry budget, our children's ministry budget. There's all kinds of stuff that's happening here and it's just an absolute delight. Not to mention all the good work that these folks right here are stirring up as they minister in the community, minister to you and your families, and just uh, get to do all kinds of great things for God. Um, As the elders were looking at 2021 this year, they actually, you know, every year our budgeting process, we work with a CPA, we do a lot of praying about it, and there's always areas where we're stepping out in faith, where we're going, we believe that God loves this so much and this serves our vision that we want to take a step here that goes beyond where we currently are. And we've taken a step in terms of our staffing this year. There's some strategic hires that we're going to be making throughout the year. And the elders and myself also, uh, we feel really passionate about this building payment. 
Because if we can get rid of this building payment, think about what would happen. All of a sudden now we can fund more here, we can fund more here, we can leave the water on for all the baptisms that are happening, you know. I mean, all this kind of stuff. This is a huge amount right here. And so we, want, we are taking a steps in 2021 to actually pay a little extra on our mortgage. We have ourselves on a, on a 15-year amortization on our books, even though our mortgage is amortized, easy for me to say, longer. And so those are some areas where we're just forward-thinking, where our vision is driving some steps of faith, but this is how the ministry dollars get used. Mm-hmm. It is really exciting, and it's something I'm really grateful for. I love the way that our church talks about finances and giving. It's been really kind of a... a f- a fresh experience for me. I take it for granted a little bit, but seeing um, seeing the church through fresh eyes as my husband's become a part of Court Street, he was the person that really pointed out like, this is a great conversation to be a part of, and it does fuel a lot of good things. So um, in our family, we we love giving, and this is an example of how people in our church choose to donate. So we've got a list of, some folks use our app that's called Push Pay. Um, also, there's bank auto pay. Sometimes people set it up through their bank so that the bank just mails a check. You can give paper checks and drop them off in our offering boxes or mail them to the church, as well as cash can be received here. And then people also choose to donate property or to give some of their estate. That's another way that people choose to give. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, the, each of these areas is a great way to give. It's a great way to participate with us in the story that God's telling through this church here and around the world. And so um, I just, I super appreciate uh, each of you who's, who's donating, who's cheering us on in this. You know, um, many of us on staff also, you know, it's not a requirement of our jobs that we give, but we believe in the organization so much that many of us donate the money that we're paid back to the organization because we just love it. And um, I'll, I'll tell you a really sweet story from, uh, from this year is when everything had to be shut down back at the beginning of the pandemic, um, and it was, it was really kind of chaotic. There was so much unknown in the world. All of a sudden, there's a, there's a knock out at the door of the church. And one of, our, one of our members, who's been here for quite a while, was just knocking, and they, they wanted to make sure that somebody was still here, and they, they just wanted to make sure that they gave us their, their tithe check. And so they wanted to make sure that their donation got to the church, and they, just, uh, they, did, they were uncertain about postal things, and the whole world was uncertain, and so they just wanted to hand it to somebody because they loved the mission here so much, and they were just like, I want to make sure you guys get this. And, you know, that's, those are the sweet stories. There's just so many people like that in the church that are doing that. Um, every once in a while, we hold an estate seminar where we help people set up living trusts, and we'll, we'll do one of those hopefully in 2021 now that restrictions are, are easing. But yeah, there's so many different ways that people donate. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there's also a lot of reasons why people donate. It's a very personal thing. But uh, some of these examples that we talk about on staff is just the joy of funding things that God loves. It's what we get to do here as a church and employing an amazing team of people, uh, supporting other trustworthy organizations. We definitely distribute a lot of resources in our community and around the world. And then there's this other very personal element of satisfaction that comes with just being able to give and to, I don't know, Corey, why don't you share a little bit about that? What does that personal satisfaction look like? You you? know, the the truth that we believe here is that uh, we're created in the image of God. And so when we're, when we're cooperating and really living out that image of God in us, that's the most satisfying life that we can have, isn't it? It's the life where we're truly free, where we're truly alive. And so really to be somebody who is just benevolent with your time, benevolent with your resources, that's really connecting to the purest and truest heart of who you and I are as image bearers of God. And so the truth is, It just feels good. It's satisfying. It feels good when you know that you're funding things that God loves and that you're just um, continuing that ministry of God around the world. And uh, we do have an amazing team of people here. You know, um, it's one of those things that part of what compels me and gets me really excited about giving is I know that some parts of my money are helping to keep the child, you know, paying for the child care center to be here and helping all this stuff, raising kids here um, and all the other different things. 
And it's just absolutely wonderful. And then helping other organizations as well. You know, you, we, I don't know about you, but I get hit up a lot for donations to things. And it, and it can be kind of overwhelming because I'm like, well, how much of this donation actually helps people or is it just funding, you know, some, somebody and m- where's the money going? Well, we, we have an ongoing partnership with the organizations that we fund. And so the story that we're getting to tell here is just, um, it's something that's very personal, very connected, and it's making a great impact. You know, one of the things that I, that I, um, that I say sometimes when uh, I'll get asked at the store or something, people will say, hey, do you want to round this up to donate to this or that? And that's a cool thing. Sometimes I say yes, but a lot of times I honestly just say, actually, I'm already donating quite a bit uh, to some other organizations. And if people ask, I tell the story of this place and I'll just say, man, I'm donating to an organization that kept 35 people employed through the pandemic. They uh, have... Uh, ben, um, uh, mentoring programs here in the community. They're helping to uh, create wells for clean water over in Africa. They really have a, a beautiful program for supporting local organizations that help with people experiencing homelessness. And they're helping to raise kids in the community. And so my wife and I, we donate a whole bunch of money to that organization. So I'm going to skip the 50 cents today. And uh, it, just, it, it feels good because we're already doing it. And we're already heavily invested in something that has a broad reach towards things that we really feel good about. You know, I'll tell, I'll tell one more story too. There was um, uh, a really sweet moment where, um, where some folks came in and this was uh, after the first uh, stimulus thing went through. And um, some folks came into the church and it was another one of those moments where they came in and I happened to be here and they're like, hey, we wanted to give, wanted to give a donation to the church. I usually don't receive donations. They don't even touch my hands. They go in our offering boxes or electronically. So I generally have nothing to do with them. But in this case, they saw me, they're like, here, would you put this in the safe? And they said, uh, they said you know, we got this stimulus payment. And they, they're like, our budget's already set. Our needs are already met. And so they're just like, we figured it'd be better just to give it to the church and let you guys use it. And it was just, it was that personal satisfaction thing. Hey, we got this. We don't really need it. I bet the church will do something good with it. And so they just handed over their stimulus. And it was just a sweet, really inspiring thing. Yeah, what an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. those sort of personal interactions that we get to see into people's hearts and really be inspired by their generosity. So that's a wonderful part of what we get to do. And it really brings us to this question of like, am I leveraging my resources for something that's bigger than myself? And I, I think this has been brought a whole lot of vision into our family and really that sense of per- personal satisfaction. Um, Corey, did you have more you wanted to share about this? Yeah, I do. I just want to say, you know, um, I, I believe so much in what's going on here that I'm investing the best part of my working life and my working years here. Alice and I, like I said, we're investing financially. We're also donating time. And, um, and we love it. We absolutely love it. And part of what we love is at the end of the year, we get to look back and sometimes you kind of have those things of, did I, have I done enough or have I this or that? And the story that this church is, is telling, anybody that's contributing here, and not just financially, but you're cheering us on through prayer, all this stuff, you're participating and helping this to actually happen. And that's just, um, that's just a good feeling when you go, you know what, I'm not just leveraging my resources for myself. I'm not just, you know, bu- building my empire someday so I can, so I can retire. Those are, those are nice things. And, you know, what? we all have fun. We, do, we have things that we spend our money on. But when you feel like your money is writing a bigger story than just yourself, that's where we're living that life that Jesus talked about, that life that is truly life. And, um, and it's just a wonderful place to be. And so, you know, it's worth when we talk about money also saying, hey, if you're not already helping to do this and you're able to, man, jump on board. In fact, Danny, you want to tell them sure. about the, the push pay thing? Yeah, push pay is like the very easy, simple tool for how to give um, electronically here at Court Street. And so it's an app and uh, you can access it through an app or a web page. But the easiest way to get started is really if you text the word push pay to the number 77977. And that's going to send you a link for the free app. So you don't have to go searching for it. They'll just 
give you, connect you with it really easily, and then they'll connect you to Court Street, and you're off to the races. You can set it up for a one-time gift, you can set it up for recurring, and it can be a, a several avenues of either credit card or your bank account or a debit card, whatever you choose to personalize. And so these are inspiring things to talk about, and I'm and, you know, if this is the right next step for you, that's something to consider. Sometimes Allison and I use PushPay, so, you know, we trust it, too, when there's, like, a drive that we're doing. Sometimes we'll send our money that way. So this is something that uh, we have an ongoing partnership with them. All you got to do is send that little phrase right there. Just send the word PushPay to that number. You'll be off to the races. Um, well, hey, uh, you know, the story of God's work through this church uh, the church is in this building. The church is us. We are the church. And it's a good story, isn't it? It's something that uh, we're not ashamed to talk about. In fact, if anything, as a church, I apologize. We sometimes talk too little about money. And uh, I was just talking to a buddy this week. He's like, man, I went to a service. They passed the bucket three times. He's like, it was at the beginning when the pastor spoke and got really passionate. Then when the music started, and I was just like, yeah, you know, we got these boxes around and a push, you know, thing. And, and, but you know what? Uh, it's a good, good story. And your participation with us is something that we just wanted to end by saying, thank you, church. And uh, this, is, um, this is all happening because of God's work through you. And uh, I can't wait to see what we get to tell as we continue into 2021. Well, hey, welcome back. Uh, who knew that talking about church finances could be so much fun and exciting? And you know, uh, when you hear a compelling story or you hear people stepping out in faith like what we were talking about or people being faithful the way that they have, uh, generosity has this contagious quality to it, doesn't it? Where you're like, I think I want to write a better story with my finances. I think I want to feel more freedom. I want to feel like God's doing something through the dollars and cents and all of this kind of stuff in my life. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little creative, artistic, and post-production liberty here. After uh, Danny and I came up with that question that we ended it with, I wanted to change it just slightly so it reflects a little more directly our mission here at Court Street. And so here's the question I really want you to consider is, do my finances tell a compelling story of loving God and loving others? Okay. This isn't something, you know, designed to shame you, guilt you, or whatever. It's something that's really inspiring. It's this invitation of, oh my goodness, my finances, the things that I do with my money, they can tell a big story. And they can tell this great story of loving God and loving others. That's an exciting and beautiful invitation, isn't it? You know, um, it's not just about being generous with our finances. It's also about being generous with our time with the other resources that we have, with the gifts that God has given us. But finances are one of those areas, aren't they, where we often feel the pinch of stinginess or selfishness or even the pain of regret as we've kind of painted ourselves into a corner and we need the God of grace to rescue us out of it. One of the... Um, one of the scriptures that really ministers to me and is super inspiring in my life uh, comes from directly from the mouth of Jesus. And this is uh, Jesus speaking in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. This is the message uh, paraphrase, which was um, uh, done by a pastor who was just trying to put the words of Jesus into modern context so people could really connect well. And here's what Jesus said. He said, give away your life. Give away your life. That's where you'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and with blessing. You see, giving is not, giving not getting is the way. Giving not getting is the way. And generosity begets generosity. Jesus wasn't just preaching at humanity. He actually lived that out to the nth degree. I mean, he went the full distance with that philosophy, didn't he? of being someone who was benevolent, even to the point of sacrificial death. And um, as we take our inspiration from him, as we, look, as we think about those words and that invitation to find a life that is, that is bigger, that is bolder, that is better, I want to ask you a very specific question today and to identify what it is that needs to increase in your finances. And I'm going to give you a little list here. 
And just to admit, financially, what do you want with God's help to increase? Is it in the area of knowledge? Maybe you're just like, Corey, nobody ever taught me. I need almost like that speech that your mama got about like checks and how all that kind of stuff works. Hey, I've got good news. We have access here at the church to good teaching about that kind of stuff. We can help you go through it. And we would be really excited to help you increase that knowledge to make even better decisions and tell a more compelling story with your finances. Allison and I had to go through this in our marriage and we signed up for a small group. In fact, it was in this very room and we went through it together and did these workbooks. We realized she was a free spirit, I was a nerd, and even that was transformative in us to just acknowledge and love the other person where they were at. Maybe you just need some knowledge. You can reach out to us, we'd love to help you with that. Or maybe you need some discipline. You're like, Corey, it ain't a lack of knowledge. I know what I ought to do, but I don't do it. It's like what the Bible talks about, you know, that whole cycle thing. I'm stuck there. Um, this would be a great place. Maybe you need some encouragement. Maybe you need some prayer just to help you break through some spiritual barrier. Again, we would love to cheer you on in that. Finances and mistakes with finances aren't things that we want to parade around to shame people. It's areas where God's grace can come in and release something beautiful. That's a story that we're excited to tell. Reach out to us. Maybe we can pray for you in that. Maybe it's developing a bigger vision that would cause you to have to want even more discipline, to say, you know what? My life's vision is kind of down here, but I'm starting to get this bigger vision of doing things beyond myself. And that has a way of activating our discipline. Maybe you uh, today are inspired to take a step of generosity. Maybe kind of I talked in there a little bit about, you know, sometimes it's convicting the things that I spend money on and you're like, you know, I'm spending a lot more on this, which is kind of trivial, than telling stories that really matter and are big. And uh, the best thing to do with generosity is to just take a step and put yourself out there. Maybe today's the day to, um, to take a step and follow through on those instructions like Danny and I give to partner financially with what we're doing here. Or maybe there's something else that you're just like, you know, I've been meaning to do that, but I just haven't been doing the research or signing up for the thing or whatever it is, but take a step with generosity. Maybe that's the increase that will activate a more compelling story for you today. Last thing I'll say about this, last thing, we're about to the end here, is maybe financially what you want to increase is your legacy. You know, um, as we get later in life, we start to think very differently about our resources. And sometimes we go into this hoarding mode. Other times we go into this bigger vision benevolent mode where we're looking at how can I leverage my life's work, my finances, my property, whatever, to tell a story that outlives me, a compelling story that goes beyond this life. That's an exciting thing to consider, isn't it? And uh, here at the church, one of the ways that we do that is every once in a while we schedule, usually once a year, we missed last year because of the pandemic, but we schedule a financial planning seminar. And this is put on by a, a Christian organization where they come in, they explain some things about finances, setting up a lot of end of life considerations like a will, a living trust, advanced directive for your health, and a host of other things. And all that they ask is that within those documents that they will help you create. Usually people pay thousands of dollars to have these things created. This ministry does it benevolently. And all they ask is that within those documents that you put something that benefits the kingdom of God somehow. Your local church, something that is just, it's going to be bigger than just giving it away to whoever's listed as your heirs. And so maybe today... There's something in all of this that you're like, you know what, Corey, I do want that. I need a little knowledge. Would you point us in the right direction? Hey, Corey, you know what? Uh, the discipline thing, would you just pray me through this? We'll keep that confidential. We'd love to pray over you about that or encourage you in some way. Maybe it's the generosity and you just need to follow the clicks or links or call your bank or whatever. Um, and you need to activate that and take a step or even maybe you're taking steps. Maybe it's time for a bigger step. I don't know. And then there's the legacy piece. Either any of those things, I'm gonna put our contact things up here on the screen. You could email us and ask for something, for some support. You could text us. Maybe you want us to keep your name in the queue for that next financial planning seminar, which we're hoping to schedule uh, this coming fall. Uh, whatever it is though, 
I want you to know this. Let's go back to this question. Let's go back to this vision. Do my finances tell a compelling story of loving God and loving others? I know people that have climbed their way out of five figures of debt, six figures of debt, even one couple that climbed their way out of seven figures of debt in order to free themselves up to tell a more compelling story of loving God and loving others. Wouldn't it be beautiful if you could take steps today to feel more of those positive emotions that we identified at the beginning of the service? If your finances were a story that you were excited to tell, if it brought you a sense of peace and satisfaction, what if you even had the confidence of knowing that, hey, when my earthly life expires, the legacy that I'm, living, or I'm leaving here is actually going to live on as a testimony of God's generosity. Well, this is exciting stuff, and I'm going to end with one last somewhat kind of dramatic gesture. And you guys know this about me if you've been with us for a while. I'm not prone to dramatic gestures, but this little thing right here, this little wallet, is something that's telling a story, isn't it? It's telling a story where if a lawyer took the, all the expenses and everything about this, they'd be able to convict me of certain things and say, Corey, it looks like you really value this. And uh, what I hope and the way that I'm trying to live my life and the way that we're living as a church is we're living in light of that Jesus ethic that when we give away our life, the life that's really worth living actually comes back to us in abundance that using this and leveraging this, this isn't mine, this is an opportunity to tell a compelling story with God. And so I'm just gonna hold this up and I'm just gonna pray over us right now. Let's pray. God, I just wanna ask very simply and very boldly for exactly what we've been talking about. Lord, would you tell a compelling story of love for you, of trust and faith in you, and also love for others through what happens uh, in our finances. God, help us to be bold and to trust you with this. Help us to be wise and to know when to, um, when to uh, make decisions and to be wise about seeking out knowledge. Help us to be humble, God, to ask for help. And God, help us to have a big vision, a big vision to live in this area like it's leading a legacy. God, I just want to say I love you. I trust you. Thank you for the good opportunity that's before us to use our finances as a tool. And may they be such that uh, the story that's told makes you smile. We love you in Jesus' good name. If you agree with this prayer, say amen. Well, hey, church, it's a privilege to get to share these things with you as usual. Hope this stirred up some good stuff in your life. It got me excited and got me inspired to go on the journey of preparing this and um, like I said, please don't uh, forget to reach out to us. Use those contact links. They'll pop up here at the end as well. Uh, we're cheering you on. We're cheering you on. There's no shame in this. There's only opportunity for God to tell a good story. Let's do that, all right? We'll see you next week.